Hello and welcome to a, another behind the scenes video which I'll be completely honest with you. This is the second time I'm going to record this because I realised the first time I was doing this I was 20 minutes in talking to myself and still couldn't make what I thought was easy work. So this is a second chance for me to babble on about the fact that I had a filling at the dentist on Tuesday. Um, but we're going to look at the MIDI routing that they've added to Logic 11, which is something that I spoke about the other week. And the one thing that annoyed me about MIDI effects was the fact that you had to play it in live if you wanted to record the effects but the MIDI routing now puts Logic back in line with what you can do in Ableton for example. If this is your sort of thing <laughs> who knows maybe not um, but if it is um, this is a behind the scenes look this is why it's not scripted and it wasn't scripted but i do have an understanding of what i'm going to show you now because the previous 20 minutes i just recorded was a waste of time we did not get anywhere well i didn't get anywhere um but yeah like and subscribe is always appreciated okay so the problem that I was trying to address the other week it wasn't a problem because we didn't have an issue um, was if we add a instrument like a piano right there we go we've got a piano let's just record some I've had to go off looking at the bar because I forgot to turn the metronome on. Blech. What I'm going to do is use the uh, force legato here. Because if you're going to add MIDI effects, ideally you want the notes to um, go to the end of the bar because anything you are doing will be affected by the length of note. So if this note suddenly stopped here um, or there, it would change the arpeggio pattern, for example. So let's do that. Let's add a MIDI effect. The arpeggiator is the obvious one. Now that's great, but if I want to record that in and use this setting of record to midi track here i have to play it in live which isn't good because if i miss that ever so slightly it's going to generate a different set of notes but with the new midi routing and this is maybe i'll do it wrong to start with actually let's put another Let's put a note repeater in as well. Because this then makes me think that the uh, 20 minutes talking to myself wasn't wasted. Okay, so we've got an arpeggiator and a note repeater. What I previously would have done is set this to record 
MIDI to track here. And then I would have tried to play this in. Let's have a go. Okay, that's pretty good actually. Here's some odd notes that are repeated. But what you should now be able to do is take this second track and for reference purposes, let's use a different sound. So let's have an electric piano. What I should be able to do is now find this internal MIDI in and pick another MIDI track. So I'm going to choose Yamaha Grand Piano. Great. There we go. So if I play the Yamaha Grand Piano and I've got my electric piano. So what I want is the output of this, this piano, to be the input to this track. But if you have done something like this and turned on record MIDI to track here, it doesn't work. What I need to do is make sure that is turned off and the internal MIDI in is set to the other instrument. He says, uh, that's in. And that's in. <laughs> I don't want to speak to myself for another 20 minutes. Um, so that is generating the correct sounds. What I need to do is get it to play those and record those arpeggios and note repeaters into the modern classic as it plays. So if I put this on record and I've made sure I've set this to instrument in, hopefully thank goodness for that, because previously that didn't work. So what we've got is a key track here, which has these effects on it, the arpeggiator and the note repeater. And then you've got this electric piano, which has now been set to internal MIDI as the instrument input of the grand piano. So it is listening for the MIDI of that. So it's after the MIDI effects have happened. And you will set, I think you will hear that sounds better than when I tried to play it in live. So, um, I'm very happy with that <laughs> as a way of routing things. The other thing that I have seen mentioned online is the fact that you should be able to use this for multiple instruments. 
Um, so let's create a second instrument and okay, let's get rid of the original because this MIDI is still there. What if I want to double that with a piano now? So let's grab a piano. Do, 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 do. Do, do. That'll do. If we set this internal MIDI to follow modern classic, it goes horribly wrong. But this is also following that modern classic. What you don't want to do is now play anything on this track because, as you just heard, it's going to double what it's trying to do. But I don't need any MIDI information on this other track. The reason you might want to do this, or might think you want to do this, is in a lot of the composing trick videos, I've layered different instruments on top of each other at different uh, velocities or different octaves. And that's fine, but I think you would be better off doing it either in a track stack because otherwise things are going to get complicated when you get into virtual instruments the actual timing of the notes that are being played may vary from instrument to instrument and you may need to change them so using the same midi source isn't necessarily a good idea it may help it may not so let's have a look. So for example, uh, let's take celli and bass. Really simple example. Let's just do legato celli. Let's mute those. Okay, so we've got a cherry track there. Let's duplicate it to bases. And what I would normally do is copy this MIDI down here. Now, with MIDI routing, what I should be able to do is say, actually, I want the celli. And indeed, I get that MIDI sent through to this bass track without putting any MIDI on it. Even if I solo it, what I would probably do is then have to go to transpose. So I'm getting a very similar effect to the layering. The only thing I don't like about this is you don't have as much control. So, in terms of recording the MIDI effects, I think this is absolutely brilliant. I think this is going to be in the logic tip 
for next week. But in terms of layering and saving yourself time, I don't think you're saving yourself that much time. It would be much. Well, to the way I work at the moment, I would just do that. Drag it down. Uh, not bother about trying to go in here and mess with transpose features. I would just copy them down and not use and not use that internal feature. It's nice to know it's available and certainly for copying the MIDI effects that is really really useful. So there you go. I've been to the dentist. You've learned something about uh, the internal MIDI routing and if you found this useful like and subscribe always appreciated we'll see you in the next video bye for now